Okay, who do we have today? Of course, no others than Dr. Bayan! Okay! <laughs> Thanks for watching and by popular demand, I will prove the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. I will give the classical proof, but it's actually pretty great too. And obviously not as exciting as the other one, but that's fine. So our goal is... Show that if you take the function, let's say from a to x, of f of t dt, and again, this is a function of x and not t, if you differentiate that, you in fact get f of x back. In other words, let's show that the derivative of the integral is the function itself. And so first of all, let's call this a name. Let g of x b equal to integral from a to x f of t dt, right? Then that derivative, that derivative from a to x f of t dt, all that this is, is g prime of x, right? And we want to show that this is f of x. Want this to be equal to f of x. What is g prime of x? By definition of the derivative, that's limit x plus h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. Right? And that becomes, by definition, okay, what is g of blah? Is integral from a to blah of f of t dt. So g of x plus h becomes integral from a to x plus h f of t dt minus integral from a to x of f of t dt. Divide this all by h. What does this represent? And assume for the moment that x and h are positive. Suppose you have this point a you have the point x and point x plus h, and you have the function f here. Well, the integral from, you know, a to x plus h, it's precisely this. But from this area, you're subtracting the area from a to x of f of t dt. So, what you, in the end, what you're left with is the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. So that's equal to the limit of h goes to 0 of integral from x of x plus h f of t dt over h. The thing is, again, remember our goal is we want this to be equal to f of x. Okay. All right. So if we want this to be equal to f of x, let's just look at the difference. So maybe step two. Okay. Compare this. Again, let's look at the difference. So look at limit h goes to 0 of integral of x and x plus h f of t dt over h minus f of x. Okay, now, so we want to compare this with f of x, so look at the difference, and one thing, because we want this to be equal to f of x, ideally, we want this to be 0. Okay, here comes the crucial observation, which really makes this work. Again, this is an integral, this is a number. Two very different things. You would like to have something that's either an integral minus an integral, or a number minus a number. Something of the same nature. Okay. And as I said, here comes a crucial observation. Notice the following. f of x, you can write it as a follows. f of x times 
the integral from x to x plus h of, I guess, 1 of dt over h. And why is that true? Because if you calculate this integral, that's the integral of 1, and that should be equal to x plus h minus x. This integral equals to h if you divide it by h. It equals to 1. If you multiply this by f of x, it equals to f of x. By the way, you might say, hey, I used the fundamental theorem of calculus here. No, I did not. This just follows from the definition of the Riemann integral. Re the, the, you know, the integral of 1 is always b minus a. You know, that's just from definition. And then we can put the f of x inside, and you're left with integral from x to x plus h of f of x dt over h. And notice, I put f of x and not f of t. This is just the integral of the constant f of x, you know, uh, with respect to t. Okay, now let then again, limit h goes to 0 of this job. Integral x to x plus h, f of t dt over h minus f of x. Again, I to remind you, we want this equal to 0 becomes the limit as h goes to 0 of integral from x to x plus h f of t dt over h minus the integral from x to x plus h f of x dt over h. And this, we can neatly rewrite this in terms of one integral. Again, I split up the limit and here, everything's fine. Limit h goes to 0 of integral x to x plus h f of t minus f of x over h dt. dt over h. And um, ideally, again, we want to show that this is equal. Here comes a crucial thing. We want to show this limit is zero, and I've been trying to avoid this until now, but unfortunately, we need to take out our epsilon delta gun. Because <laughs> we have a limit, we want to show rigorously it equals to zero. Okay. So, what do we want? <laughs> epsilon delta. Okay, step three. Namely, what we want to show that, okay, show that uh, basically if h is small enough, then this thing, so absolute value of this junk, x, x plus h, f of t minus f of x dt over h is, is as small as you want. All right? And, uh, yeah. So we want to show if h is small enough, then this thing, if you want, is as small as you want. As we want. Okay. So, in other words, now let's you know, use epsilon delta. So, Here's the abracadabra, let epsilon bigger than zero, and um, want to show that, you know, we want to find, so uh, find delta such that if absolute value of h is less than delta, then this jump here, x, x plus h f of t minus f of x dt over h absolute value is less than epsilon. Okay. One little thing, so uh, if h is negative, you can just replace the whole proof I'm going to do now with h positive, 
and you know it's not a big deal. So from now on, let's just assume H is positive. I mean, in generality, assume H is positive. Otherwise, repeat all the proof I'm gonna do now, but with H negative. So assume. are we going to show that this thing is very small? Um, and the thing is, there's just one ingredient we haven't used yet and that I haven't even written down. It turns out you can't always integrate for any function, right? There's a nice video I presented a while ago that gives you a function that's not integrable. However, if f is nice enough, you can do this. In particular, if f is continuous, you can do this. And notice, so far I didn't use any continuity except for now and here where it's crucial. It's where it's crucial. So use the continuity of f. Of f. What does it mean for f to be continuous? It means that if t and x are close enough, then this quantity is as small as we want. So, because f is continuous, we can find delta greater than zero such that if, let's say, x minus t is less than delta, then f of x minus f of t is less than epsilon. Now, this delta might depend on x, but here x is fixed, so we're completely fine. All right, once we have that, we're actually done, because, you know, almost done, because all we need to do is estimate this integral. So, with that delta, we have, what I mean is, you know, um, we want to find delta such that this is true. This is precisely the delta that we want. So, you know, if one, the delta prime be that delta, we have, in fact, that absolute value of x to x plus h, f of t minus f of x dx over h. Well, again, h is positive, so we can write this this way into from x to x plus h, f of t minus f of x dx. Now, we want to estimate this, and it turns out there's just one little, you know, one inequality that helps you estimate this, namely it's a triangle inequality, which says that the absolute value of the integral is less than the integral of the absolute value. So this becomes 1 over h integral from x to x plus h, f of t minus f of x over dx, oh dt, sorry, dt, dt. But no, 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 you know, uh, no, 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 okay. <laughs> if t is in that interval, then, okay, maybe let me write that out. Note, if t is between x and x plus h, then t minus x is between 0 and h. So in particular, t minus x is less than or equal to h. Okay, forget about the less than equal, you know, this less than h, but that's precisely what we want because we know that h is less than delta. So, t minus x is less than delta, therefore, in fact, f of t minus f of x is less than epsilon. So, the point is, we're in the good domain. It's like the war and we're in the battlefield and we captured the enemy. So, let's shoot the enemy with our epsilon signs. Because this is less than epsilon, and again, now let's have a party. This is less than integral from x to x plus h, epsilon dt 
is epsilon comes out, and you get epsilon over h. Integral x to x plus h dt. This becomes x plus h minus x, and that's h. And then we have epsilon over h times h. And here comes the satisfaction. We get epsilon, epsilon. <laughs> um, so in fact, you know, with that delta, we have that uh, maybe not less, it's less than, so if we choose that same delta that gives you the continuity of f, then if h is smaller than delta, we have that this junk is strictly less than epsilon. And then once you find epsilon in the end, mathematician is very happy, and we are done. And we proved the fundamental theorem of calculus. Wow! Yes. Ooh. That looks like epsilon to the box. Epsilon to the box, absolutely. Yeah, yeah cool. <laughs> it's better than epsilon. Yes, and please, if you like that, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> bye bye bye. Um, bye bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye to the episode. Okay, cool. Bye. <laughs>